Hello, families. Welcome to Ninth Grade World History. Uh, my name is Mr. Maureen. And I'm Mr. Hartman. And we're excited to introduce you to our course. Students out there watching, uh, please participate along with your families. Uh, we're going to start with uh, modeling one of our asking big questions or world history wonders. So students were exploring the agricultural revolution right now, the farming revolution. Think back and we'll practice to think aloud with our families right now on this idea that evidence has shown a rapid expansion of cultural complex rituals and religions that emerged during this time, in addition to the advances in technology and economy. So pause the video here for a second and practice that think aloud. I wonder what conditions might explain this cultural blossoming, this expansion of culture and religious ideas during this era. Go ahead and pause the video and have that conversation with your families. All right, hopefully some interesting ideas came up for all of you. Um, that's modeling one of the big uh, types of assessment and learning that we'll do this class that we'll talk about in a moment, asking and considering, carefully thinking on big questions. I am Kyle Maureen. Yes, I pronounce it Maureen. I use he, him pronouns, and this is the start of my 13th year in the classroom. I have uh, taught ninth grade ancient world history. Uh, this is my fifth year at Ballard, and I really love this course. Uh, I'm excited for ninth graders who are new to high school, coming from all of our different middle schools, and especially the opportunity to go back to prehistory and get students thinking about the conditions that um, help us to create agreed upon values and, and build societies. Um, it makes for really enriching and interesting conversations with them the political interests and understanding of current events that your students have. Uh, in addition to my classroom roles in the school, I'm the club advisor for the STAR Club, that's the Students and Teachers Against Racism, which I will encourage your students to learn more about and participate in. And I'm also the head coach of the boys' swim team. Um, in this photo, I've included a picture of me, my wife Ingrid, and that is Oliver there, Ollie, he's nine months old and is really such a focus of my time when I am not in the classroom. I've also included here um, a framework I like to use with students in uh, getting to know you, read, listen, watch, uh, could be a good way for people to um, connect over the dinner table too. I love uh, that as a good share with everybody. I'd like to introduce Mr. Hartman. Hello everybody, uh, I'm Nathan Hartman. I uh, use he, him pronouns, and this is my first year in a classroom as a teacher. Um, I am the student teacher slash apprentice for Mr. Maureen. Uh, he's going to help me learn how to become a teacher throughout the year. I'm currently enrolled at the University of Washington Bothell. Uh, I have a degree in education and my endorsement's in history. Uh, a couple of pictures on the right. Uh, in the top right corner is me and my now wife, uh, Sierra. Um, that is my dog, Ruben. And then those two little humans next to us, in the, next to my dog, are my niece and nephew, who mean a lot to me and a lot of my time outside of this building are spent hanging out with them and learning from them as much as I hope they learn from me. Uh, and again, once again, uh, at the bottom there, there's some reading, listening, and watching that I've been doing. I'm very excited to work with your students. I'll be here throughout the entire year, uh, and they have already had a remarkable impact on me. So I'm excited for what the rest of the year brings. Awesome. Welcome, Mr. Hartman. It's going to be so great to have multiple adults and uh, have different perspectives of, of support and encouragement uh, with our ninth grade students, especially this year. All right, so I wanted to do offer a quick overview here of some of our essential guiding questions, these big wonders and whys and hows. Uh, we're in right now starting in prehistory and looking at the migration, the peopling of the planet, the agricultural revolution. We'll move through the classical era and spend time with eight or 10 of the major cultural traditions that emerged during that time that are still influential religions and philosophies in the world today. We will talk a lot about the globalization of trade network and um, then across the second semester, we will move through global expansion and believe it or not, we'll get through the industrial revolution. So this is a course that covers a lot of ground. It is a giant survey course, ancient world history, nine, uh, ninth grade. Um, here's an overview of some of the skills that I like to make sure that parents know that we are covering um, argumentative writing is the primary skill set that we teach in all social studies classes at Ballard.
authored. That's claim evidence reasoning writing, even if that's just one paragraph, even if it's summarizing a video that we watched in class or a lecture that we gave or book work, this will be the skill set that I teach. I am both a trained LA teacher and an avid reader and writer. And for me, much more important than memorizing historical facts and details is becoming a clear and cogent communicator. And students are going to practice that through both writing as well as speaking. We'll have speaking assessments and skills practiced through interactive uh, seminar in the classroom as well as our current events Fridays. So two, two assessments I'm really excited about are the big questions and the reflections that your students are doing and keeping a journal quarterly with their composition book. And each Friday, four or five students will be sharing out a current event across the first quarter. These have already been such a success and Mr. Hartman and my favorite days already this year. Hearing what students are passionate about, seeing their very thorough and thoughtful research, and then standing up in front of their peers, most of whom they don't know, at least two years out of practice from that kind of public speaking, these have already been our best days. And I am considering ways of, of being able to record and or uh, share those with all of you families because it's really an incredible way to see your students shine. Uh, just a couple quick overviews on workload. We will not have homework every night in this class. It is not that kind of class, even for students who are interested in the honors distinction which we'll talk about. That homework is often gonna look like a combination of reading, listening, and watching. Uh, yes, I fold in a lot of podcasts uh, to this class. We do have two textbooks, Holt's Patterns of Interaction and Strayer's Ways of the World, both of which are available in uh, color PDF chapter on our Schoology page, but students are also welcome to check one of those books out from the library. Uh, one of the must-have resources for our class is a composition book. We will actively be teaching Cornell Notes along with other note-taking styles. These notebooks will be a resource that students can use on every assessment in our class. So really teaching them that analog organization in a composition book. So a composition book and a pen or pencil should absolutely be coming with students every day. Just a little bit of a reminder here on major assessments and things that are predictive. I've mentioned the um, oral assessments that come with presentations, both current events as well as group projects, our argumentative writing, uh, CER, our big questions, our Socratic seminar. Um, and as a reminder there, we cover prehistory all the way through the Industrial Revolution. Now, one question that I'm sure a lot of you came for is, wait, I thought my students signed up for honors world history. This is the second year now where there is no standalone ninth grade honors history class. So we have all ninth graders in all of the same world history class. It is one group. There is nothing to sign up for. Ninth grade world history honors and the honors skills that we will provide to all students the opportunity to practice and progress through is an opportunity for students to be prepared for what AP history classes expect skills wise without the course without the workload so um, that way any student by march and april when we start signing up for 10th grade knows what the rigor of the writing that they will be expected to do the challenge of the reading that they will be expected to tackle and take notes on so they can make an informed decision of if they want to sign up for AP World History as a 10th grader and eventually AP US as an 11th grader, AP government. So this is an opportunity to say, and I'll get my video out of the way so you can all see this. Any student can earn honors distinction in our class. This designation will be determined by students who complete a majority of the honors skills tasks when noted in work. Uh, this could be in projects, notes, and homework. Um, that's uh, also they've demonstrated and earned an advanced proficiency on a majority of those skill based rubrics and then at the end of the term they have to earn an 85% or better. But there's nothing they have to sign up for. This can be something that they come in and out of on a skill that they practice and we really just want to convey to them that it's about an exposure to these skills 
and the people who want to make that investment in ninth graders and, and think they might want to do AP history classes later on, we want to make sure that they have that opportunity to understand those rigors and expectations. Okay, lastly, and this is a protocol piece that we're all adjusting to again, students got very comfortable with using their phones and multiple pieces of technology and splitting their time and attention spans when they were at home the last year and a half. Um, so I would ask that you help us reinforce this protocol at home. Cell phones are a privilege, they are not a right. I have been a longtime advocate of technology in the classroom and we will use uh, student computers often in the classroom. But when I expect phones to be away and not out, they will be away and not out. Um, I, I give students sort of a one-time reminder and then I'll hold on to phones for the rest of the class period, maybe the rest of the day. Um, we're getting a chance to do school in person again, and so it's really important to me that we are here while we are here. I hope that is a standard that um, you all will help us to uphold. So thank you for coming. I'm glad we got to do this introduction. I'm sad we're not getting to do it in person, but again, your students so far have shown us such an eagerness to start high school. They are highly skilled and, and intently curious. I think this is a testament to your hard work as parents. I have a new appreciation for this now as a parent myself, and I hope this video offered you some sense of who I am, my philosophy, and my enthusiasm for working with our students this year. Thank you, be well, and keep in touch. Thank you.